get started, I'm gonna, sh oh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. So, uh, Stephanie, can you like, um, one second, let me see if, okay. Um, oh, no, Stephanie, she's the other, uh, she's like kind of the host. Um, she's, I don't know if you can see all of the um, panelists, but she's there. Um, okay, so, um, okay, here's what we're gonna do since I can't screen share. Do you guys have, um, do, uh, can, do you guys know, do you guys have the, the drive? No? Okay. The Google Drive, I, I thought I gave it to you guys first class, the, the Google Drive, the, the folder with like the presentation and all the homework in it. No? Okay. Um, then I'm just going to send it to you guys and I guess we're going to just have to, um, I'm just going to get y'all to follow along and hope. Uh, I think, do you guys, do, do, does your school go to have like, um, does your school have a Google Drive, a Google account for you? Because I think you do. But um, let me go and I'm, yeah, you can use your personal account. Uh, I'm gonna go and message Stephanie real quick to tell her that I can't screen share. But for now, just, I'm gonna give it, give the link to y'all and then, um, okay. Can you guys, can you guys access it? Yeah, yeah, this is made on Google Slides. So Gmail, if you have a Gmail account, that's what you guys should be. It should, it should work if you have a Gmail account. Okay, um, is everybody on the, is everybody on the slides? Okay, then we can get started. So I can start, I can, ha before we actually get to anything, I'm gonna make a little poll. So over here, how many people did the homework last week? And then just follow what the, so type a question mark in chat. If you weren't here last week or didn't have access to this, homework type a hashtag in chat if you knew about the homework but didn't do it and type a exclamation mark in chat if you did the homework but didn't send it in for feedback and then type a smiley face in the chat if you did the homework and sent it in the feedback and i don't think there's going to be any um smiley faces because wait you, you sent it i didn't i didn't get the email although i might be um Although I, I could have gotten uh, this confused, so. Okay, um, for the person who put the smiley face, I didn't get your homework, but if you could just resend it, that, um, that would be great. Um, I don't know. It, it might have been like a typo or something that like sent to the wrong email, but I never received it. Oh, no, 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 this, that was for week one. There's like homework for every week. So, um, so like week one, there was one homework and then week two. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, also I have a quick question. Can you guys like give me a general idea of what, around what grade y'all are in? Because I've been kind of, uh, teaching y'all as if you were fifth grade, but then I kind of realized you guys maybe weren't. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah, okay, that's great. Cause I, I was like, what if I made it too hard? But okay, okay. Um, so we're gonna start. 
Okay, that's great. Now I have like a pretty good general idea because tomorrow, not tomorrow, tomorrow, sorry. Next week we're gonna do a um, do a mock investigation. So I kind of wanted to know around what level I should make it. Okay, so st if you guys could all move to slide three, we're gonna start with um, fiber analysis. Okay, and then just next slide. So there's many types of different, there's many different types of fibers, but uh, in this presentation, we're only gonna talk about cotton, silk, acrylic, polyester, and wool and linen. And these are some of the pictures that you'll be identifying the, fiber, the fibers from. So you're not gonna go and look at a piece of fabric and say, oh, this is cotton or, oh, okay, wait, can I share screen? Oh, okay, this is great. Um, yeah, I can share screen, so. Yeah, can you guys see it? I'm gonna move this for, to presenting. Okay, I think you guys can see it now. Yay, that, that's great. Oh, one second, wrong, wrong slide. Okay, so we're, uh, as you can see, what we're gonna be doing for fiber analysis is we're gonna go look at a micro, like a picture of a fiber from like in a micro in a microscopic level and you're going to identify what kind of fiber it is and i know it sounds a little bit intimidating at first but there's very there's some key identifying factors about each fiber so when you look at a fiber you can uh see which exactly which one it is um why is the q a not opening i there's somebody who typed something in the q a if you can type it in chat because for some reason, Q&A is not opening. Okay, so we're gonna start with the three categories of fibers. These are vegetable fibers, animal fibers, and synthetic or man-made either works. Um, so these fibers are from plants and they're like cotton and linen. The Google Classroom, I don't, there's no Google Classroom. It was, um, I just couldn't screen share, so I was gonna send, I just sent the slides. I don't have a, there's no Google Classroom. Fibers? Okay, so sometimes I'm gonna say this as like maybe um, a, from like a crime scene, maybe there was some guy who decided to steal, I don't know, some money in a bank. Oh, okay, fibers are like, the things that you weave into cloth so like your shirt it's made out of fibers or like maybe if you have like a bag it's also made out of fibers and what fibers have to do with forensics is so say somebody snagged um like their shirt or something on on something very sharp and they left a fabric then you can help you can look at the fabric see what it is identify it and then um, say you have a suspect who was wearing, I don't know, linen on the day of the crime and then you, there was a piece of linen fabric at the crime scene, then you can identify who it is. Um, okay, and then animal fibers, these are fibers that come from anything in the kingdom Animalia. So if you guys, it's, it's just a kingdom, basically all animals I was gonna put anything in animal, but I wasn't really sure if a silkworm counted. I probably should have researched this, but yeah. Um, and then synthetic or man-made is anything that it doesn't occur in nature. So acrylic and polyester. So first we're gonna, oh. Yeah, I have this open on two screens. So I'm screen sharing and I'm screen sharing on one screen and then the other screen, I just have it open. So um, when I sent you guys the link, just don't look at that. You look at the screen share because I, I was, I'm, I'm now able to screen share. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so then we're going to start with the vegetable fibers and I want to talk about two different vegetable fibers and these are linen and cotton. So linen is, it's a fiber made from the plant flax and I don't know if you guys have heard of this but there's like flax seeds where you, where you can eat. Fiber, 
well, yes, in some terms, but over here, I'm just, I'm talking about, like, things that you can weave into cloth or kind of fabric. But I think fiber would be nutrient, could be nutrients. Um, and then, as you can see, like, some characteristics of fiber, or sorry, of linen. Okay, also, here's a picture of the flax plant, and here's a picture of what the linen woven together would be. So, oh, did not mean to do that, sorry. Um, there's the, when you look at linen from a microscopic view, you would kind of see that it's like straightish, maybe some of them bend like this one, but they're mostly straight and they have these little notches on the side. So when there's like little lines in the fabric, uh, in the different kind of polyester, um, yeah, I can, there should be a Google Drive that has everything, yeah, um, whoever raised their hand, I can see somebody did, but the, your, your screen sharing part, like the part where it says that you're screen sharing, um, I, it blocked it, so whoever, okay, um, I'm screen sharing right now, so, yeah, I'm currently screen sharing, so, you guys should be able to see it in Zoom, and you guys don't need to, you, you don't need to go through the, um, the presentation right now. But if you want to, for future reference, you can, you definitely can. Okay, uh, here we go. That's the, um, that's the drive folder that has all the homework and all of the slides. Okay, um, I'm going to get right back to the presentation because I've kind of been, like, not talking about it. But next, there's cotton. And cotton, a homonym? Um, um, I, I guess it could be, although, um, I don't, I wouldn't say so, but I guess if you think about it, it's like, there's two things. There's like dietary fiber and then there's like fibers in fabric. So they're two different things, but yeah, I guess you could say it's a homonym. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to go in. Oh, I need to stop doing that. But I'm just going to go move on to cotton. So cotton is this fiber. As you can see, you guys probably know what the cotton plant is. And um, as for the fabric, I'm pretty sure you guys have received many school t-shirts over the years, like the ones that you can't. Um, that's weird. Yeah, I'm wearing one right now too. So it should be, uh, it's like, these are usually cotton, although it could be like polyester too. Yeah, I think so too. They're very comfy. Uh, mm -hmm. Wait, somebody can't see the slides on, their, on the Zoom. I, I know I am in fibers. I'm in vegetable fibers. Can you guys see? Yeah, same, honestly, same, but, um, let me, oh, okay, that is the Google search. What do you mean the Google search? Huh? Wait, which one are you seeing? Are you seeing, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I, I had this open, um, I did, I meant to share the other screen. I am very, very, I don't know, sorry. I, I shared the wrong uh, screen because I had to make sure they weren't homonyms. Yeah, let me change that real quick. Sorry, I am very... Okay, so one second. There. Oh, okay, this is... Wait, which one? Okay, is it still sharing? I... I'm so sorry. I'm... Okay. Yeah, let me share this. This is... Um, is it still on it? Can you guys see the one? Can you see my mouse moving? Yes or no? Okay, good. Sorry, I put the wrong, I shared it when I put it, like I shared the wrong screen because I have the same thing open up on, on two 
desktop monitors. So um, do you guys want me to re-explain or do you want me to just move on? Okay. Um, okay, so, yeah, so sorry, but if you guys want to, here's the, um, here's just, I'm gonna quickly go, okay, re-explain. One person wanted me to re-explain, so I'm just gonna go and re-explain. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start from here because this is the part where you really should probably see the pictures. Um, one second. This is being very weird. Which which screen are you guys seeing? Are you guys seeing the one on vegetable fibers or are you gonna are you seeing the one that on fibers fabric? Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So um linen fibers are over here. I'm just gonna say it again, straight with not these little lines or notches in them, and then cotton. I would say like twisted ribbons, or if you have a like long piece, if you have like a thin kind of, say like a one inch by like 10 inch piece of paper and you twist it up, it would kind of look like that. Okay, I'm gonna move on to animal fibers. So there's two that I also wanna talk about. I'm just gonna talk about two specific ones from each category. Um, so there's silk and there's wool. So silk comes from, the um, silk swarm. Also, I see another um, thing in Q and A. If you guys could like, just don't use Q and A because when I'm screen sharing, I don't know why I can't open it. So um, these are the fibers that come from a silkworm. Come from silkworm cocoons. Um, this is a silkworm, and as you can see, these are little silk threads. And when silk is woven together, it makes this really shiny. I was gonna say silky at first, but then I realized that kind of defeats the whole point of describing it. But very shiny, very reflective fabric. Um, and over here you can see they're kind of straight, but they would be mostly straight, but then it's just, a, there's a little bit of variety. So I would think straight and smooth, but not completely straight. And then there's wool. This is kind of, okay, when you guys were little, did your parents ever make you wear the super itchy sweaters? No, you guys are lucky. Yeah, these sweaters, some of them can be made out of different materials, but when you look at them, that's the kind, that's very, yeah, my parents made me wear sweaters. They were itchy, but there was like, it's warm. It's good for you. If you don't wear it, you're going to catch a cold or something like that. Um, but right here, I would say wool is what a lot of these um, sweaters are made of. They can be made of out of some different fabrics, like some of the man-made fabric fabrics, but um, I would say wool is probably most commonly. And here's a sheep. I thought it was a really cute sheep, so I decided to add it. Yeah, it's really itchy. Um, and a kind of like when you look at a microscopic picture, the thing that you would have to note is that there's these like kind of scaly things on the outside. And yeah, so, and then we're gonna move on to synthetic. I, okay. It's a dirty sheet, but I mean, the face is kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now we're going to move on to synthetic fibers. So these are man-made fat fibers, and I would like, to, I kind of think like plastic fibers. So acrylic, is it's just, this is um, a fiber that, acrylic is also a type of plastic. So there's these acrylic little like slots piece uh clear slides and these can also be really thin and they can be woven into fabric and honestly oh yeah i explained this um before but fibers you when you ident you can yeah you can identify them if it's if there's some kind of cloth let out, left out of um crime scene it's really good to identify the uh, the fiber. Um, then, okay, so these are just very smooth and very wavy. And then 
if you guys want to, I can kind of try to get through this as fast as I can if you, to get to hairs. I think hairs is a little bit more interesting than fibers, but do you guys want me to kind of go faster or, okay, faster or slower? Faster? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so fibers, these are made from petroleum or, um, you don't have a what? Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. There, there were two messages and there were two. Okay, yeah. So, um, so polyester is a type of fabric made from petroleum and I'm pretty sure the petroleum is made. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, a, petroleum is made from, okay. Yeah, guys, if you want to say something, just say it as one word without the extra letters because it took a pretty long time to realize that said fast. Um, so a polyester is a type of fabric made from petroleum, which uh, this petroleum is made into PET or polyethylene. Um, I don't know how to, uh, it's like terephthalate. I'm really bad at pronouncing words. Okay, um, and then they're basically really long, they're completely straight and they're really smooth. Okay, next. Okay, we're going to do this practice problems, maybe like two minutes. Um, for one, what are the three categories of fibers? And two, what is this fiber? If you guys want me to re-explain anything, um, just ask for it in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna wait. Okay, yeah, veggie, vegetable. Yeah, that, I know. Um, if anybody wants to keep and uh, also wants to answer, I'm gonna wait until actually, it's, okay, it's 456. If you guys want to answer, uh, um, if you guys want to answer it and you're still typing in chat, just put whatever you have, but I'm gonna move on. Okay, so we're gonna move on to hair analysis and if you guys want to know what this has to do with forensics when there's like there when you can also it's like the same kind of the same way that um fibers relate to forensics if there's a piece of hair at the um uh, to the crime scene you can identify it and sometimes you can also see what color the hair is and for who it belongs to what animal it's from yeah Okay, so first I'm going to start with parts of the hair. These are pretty important. This is pretty important. So there's a lot of different areas of, like there's lots of different parts of hair, but I really just want to focus on the cuticle, the medulla, and the ovoid bodies. So cuticle, I would say it's kind of like the outer wrapping. So right here, if you see the picture, um, it's like these outside things and it kind of inertia, well, um, I don't know what you mean by inertia, but, um, so cuticle is like the outer wrapping. This is the, it kind of protects the inside of the hair and it holds it all together. And this is made out of dead, uh, dead cells. And then there's the medulla. So this is like, kind of like the middle line of the hair and the medulla is like the kind of like a core or a marrow of the hair. So you can see these, this can be a long continuous line. It could be little dots. It could, there's like very many different, there's uh, many different kinds. And then there's ovoid bodies where these are just little like concentrate, like dots of pigment throughout the hair. This, this is a drawing. Um, it's not an x-ray, it's just a drawing. Okay, so there's three types, okay, there's very many different types of medullas. There's absent, discontinued, globular, continuous, fragmental, lattice, ladder, branched, and aeriform. Um, so I circled the ones that we want to deal with for like the most. So, cause 
I'm going to explain the cat hairs, dog hairs, and um, cat hairs, dog hairs, and human hairs. So for continuous, this is the, a really long and thick strand of hair. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean strand. I, like a really long, thick medulla. Um, these are dog hairs. And then there's fragmental. So um, there's fragmental medullas. Oh, yeah, I explained that on the pre previous slide, but I'm just going to go over it right again, uh, again. So a medulla is like this middle line, and it's kind of like the core of the hair or like if you were to compare it to bone, I would say kind of like marrow. Yeah, so for in continue, it's like the very middle. It's like a darker area. Um, yeah, I. Hmm? On slide 11, I don't know which slide this is. Um, Wait, oh, this is. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that's so great for you to notice that that is a fragmental medulla. Um, I was about to point that out, but yeah. So and then there's also ladder. So the continuous is long and thick. It's a dog medulla uh, and then fragmental. So like it's kind of breaking like it's long and but like in some areas it's bro breaking and then ladder is um a kind of it's like a cat hair and these you can pretty identify pretty easily except for they do kind of look like discontinuous but i would say they don't they're not as perfect like circled um so i have some pictures of what the medullas look like so cat you can see right here that's like the ladder like medulla where there's like one thing and then space another and space another. Yeah, I mean, don't be scared. This is like, like the human hair. That's what your hair would look like under a microscope. <laughs> um, for dog hair, as you can see right here, where I talked about, it's like a big, um, like thick, continuous medulla. Right here, you can see it's really thick, long. It's really thick. It's all continuous. It doesn't really break in any area. And then the human hair it's fragmental where it's kind of breaks off yeah it's although in my opinion it's my favorite because it's the easiest to identify um another thing about human hair is sometimes the medulla can be absent so sometimes you kind of just can't see it so if it's fragmental or absent that is definitely a human hair and okay so now we have types of cuticles so where i talked about here cuticles where this is the cuticle it's like the outer wrapping and sometimes you can you're gonna see a picture of hair that's um the cuticle and not kind of like a cross section well not really a cross section but like this is where you can't see the medulla so there's two kinds of cuticles there's coronal scales and there's imbricate scales so coronal i would say looks kind of like a crown so um right here like simple it's one thing it's all around um this one looks most like the crown to me so it just kind of one layer one layer one layer and then there's ovate which these look more like scales to me um so there's also if you guys thought i was kind of confused when i first saw this picture because i thought they said that ovate cuticle was a coronal scale but then i realized it's color coded so yeah just make sure you don't um think that ovate is a coronal scale just because it's kind of close and four and four so there's five of the imbricate scales they're all like their names are all in red and there's three of the coronal scales yeah it does it does look a bit like coral um so for the imbricate scales the one again the ones i want to focus on so dog cat and human is acuminate, acrinate, and flattened. So acuminate is um, a cat hair medulla. And on the next slide, I'm gonna show it to you what it actually looks like other than like this little drawing. Um, and then there's crinate, which is, um, it's kind of like flattened, but in my opinion, it's a little bit larger. Well, it's like a little bit more spaced out. Um, and then flattened, it's very close together. 
Okay, so these are pictures of the cuticle. I hope this isn't as scary. Ovate. Yeah, it does look kind of like a mermaid's tail where each one has like a little scale. I hope these this isn't as scary, but for cat hairs, I like to see, like look for it. You it looks like a little scale and it's really sharp, so like a triangular scale. And then dog and human. These are more similar, so they you kind you can get them confused, but if you just remember that dog hairs the the scales are a little bit more spaced out than human hairs. Cuticle. Oh, did I say cubicles? Um, I meant cuticles, like with the T. So, um, yeah, Corona. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, if you don't know, cuticles, again, these are like the, um, I'm going to go back to this one picture because this is really helpful in explaining what each part is, but the cuticle is like kind of the outer wrapping of the hair. So over here, these lines. Yeah, okay, so dog, as you can see, it looks a lot like the crenate one, so you can kind of match it up. And then the human is um, flattened, and these have these are really close together as compared to the dog hairs. Okay, so these, I would say, are the identifying factors. So when you first look at a hair, this is what you're going to, like, I like to think of a, if it has this, then it's definitely that. Um, so cat hairs for my, the identifying factor is it has a medulla that looks, doesn't look like any of these. So there's, um, as you can see, again, there's like a little section right here, space section. And then also these are, I didn't write this on the presentation, but these are generally, um, these are generally thinner. And then dog hair, like if you guys have noticed some cats or like some dogs have like very coarse fur while cats have very soft fur. I would say that's something that has to do to how cat hairs are like a little bit thinner. And then, um, so dog hairs are, these have many ovoid bodies. So what you're gonna look for is the little dots and the thick, lo the long thick medulla. And the human hairs, this is like one where I would say this is an example of um, one that has an absent medulla. So when I say very thin, so that's either fragmental very thin fragmental or it's not there at all. Okay, so um, practice problems. So number one, these are all, what is the, huh, what is, wait, this is a typo. Okay, just ignore the is, what organism is this hair from? And then just choose cat hair, uh, cat, human, or dog um, out of each. And I'm going to give maybe five minutes. If you guys want less time, just tell me. Okay, um, does anybody want to answer if you guys, yeah, uh, I'm gonna wait till 510 but then if I like see a really long break of nobody answering then I'll just move on. Do you guys want more time or do you want to me to just start explaining? Uh, do you guys want more time to answer or no?
is everybody done um current if you guys are typing something in the chat just put in whatever you have no everybody's done okay so most of you guys got one and three correct what like number one and number three correct number two is actually human because if you look at the very center there is no med medulla it's very it's absent um because if this were a dog you would look for um the little dots like these and as you can see the this dog hair has a very thick medulla while which one? Oh, this um they can be different colors uh like you know like a golden retriever i guess like, if you have like a darker colored golden retriever it would be like kind of like this color um or sorry did i say golden retriever i I'm so sorry. I meant um, if you had like blondish hair um, or like a dark blonde hair, then it would probably be this color. Um, yeah, so this is a human hair because it has a very absent medulla. Um, this one, and then I'm just going to go and answer these one and three. So, um, and if you guys said dog, human, human, that's that's correct. Um, so over here, as you can see, the ladder-like medulla, and over here, there practically is no medulla. Okay, so we're going to go over last week's homework. So um, if you guys can, I think I might have sent, if you guys scroll back into the chat. Did I, did I say, did I say dog, human, human? Okay, I am so sorry. I meant cat, human, human. I am. I don't know. I just can't speak today. So like it's cat, human, human. Um, you guys. OK, if you guys scroll up a lot, actually. Yeah. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys the forensics file again. Just another link here. If you guys don't have it, just open up it up straight from here. And if you guys want, you can open up the um, the forensics week two homework because this is what we're going to be going over for the last five minutes yeah i mean if you get nauseous at blood i get nauseous at all blood that except for my own so if it's my own I'm like okay but everybody else's i like to think that it's very very concentrated red kool-aid or if you just it's just straight up red food coloring so we're gonna what and what are the three types of blood spatters so if you guys could just do you guys want okay do you guys want to answer the homework questions here as like a kind of a practice problem or do you want to yeah watery ketchup works too i mean just think think thick kind of like thick thick ish red liquid dark red liquid so do you guys want to um do you guys want to answer the questions in chat or do you want me to just go over the answers Okay, yeah, so we're just gonna go over the answers. So the three types of blood spatters. Oh, okay, what you can do is, um, I'm pretty sure on the Kid Teach Kid website, you can watch the recording. Okay, that's fine. You can either watch the, if you don't understand anything about this, you can either watch the recording or you can, um, or you can go over, like I said, I, I sent the whole drive. So if you just take that and um, go to week two, you can go over the presentation. Okay, yeah, you can just watch the recording. So the three types of blood spatters, they, they are low velocity, high velocity, and medium velocity, or I mean, you could say them in any order. So low velocity, medium low velocity, and high velocity. Okay, and then th what kind of blood stain is this? As you can see, this is kind of like a bloody shoe print. So this would be passive, either passive transfer or projected, as you can see, the blood, or I think that in this case, this is um, just red paint. So the paint for, uh, transferred from the, sh the bottom of the shoe onto, I think that is paper. Yeah, I mean, that's what I would expect most tennis shoes to look like. Yeah, that's transfer. So two examples of a low velocity spatter. Um, oh, okay, one second. So I would say just a drop of blood dripping from your finger from, I don't know, like a needle puncture, like, um, like 
I don't know. Yeah, if you like poked yourself with a needle and it dropped like due to gravity, I would say that would be a um, low velocity or a paper cut. Same thing. It starts bleeding and it drops. Um, we have like two minutes left, so I'm going to try to go as fast as I can. Um, so explain how to differ uh, differentiate between the three types of blood spatters. So, um, oh, okay. Low velocity where there's a big round drop of blood and it's usually circular. High velocity is where there's a like very fine spray and medium velocity is something between the two. Um, number five, true false forward spatter is mist-like with um, smaller drops. Um, this is false, that's back spatter. And then true or false, arterial, arterial spray or spurt, you can call it either one, um, is when there's a small minor cut due to where the blood drops straight down through gravity. This is also um, false. Arterial spurt is when you puncture artery and your heart beats and then that causes the blood to spray out. Um, number seven, there's just, this was just a bonus, so it was like optional. Uh, what chemical indicator glows in the dark and reacts with the hemoglobin? So the Latin blood stains are visible. Yeah, luminol. Um, okay. And then number eight, where's the rifling in a gun? Um, this is the barrel. And then number nine, which I think is the last one, what pushes the primer in the gun? This is the firing pin. So um, guys, I'm gonna just make sure you guys do the homework. It's a pretty good review. Um, at the top, there's going to be my email. So once you're done, okay, there's directions for the homework at the very top of the document and just send it to me. Um, and tomorrow we're going to do like a mock investigation. So I'm going to make maybe make like a fake crime and then you guys can solve it. And I think that's it. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Bye, guys. Oh, no, tomorrow. Did I say tomboy? I'm pretty sure I said tomorrow. Okay, right, bye, guys. Oh, oh, so sorry, next week. Um, homework is in the drive that I, um, that I shared. If you scroll up, you should probably see the, it's the last link that I shared. So um, if you guys want here again, the drive, this is go to week three and the homework's gonna be in there. Yeah, see you guys next week. I don't know why I said tomorrow. Bye guys. I'm just gonna wait, um, cause I can't, I don't think I can end the meeting.